Hi, this is Saints running back Mark Ingram, and you're listening to the EA Sports Madden NFL Podcast. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the official Madden NFL 13 podcast. I am AJ, a community manager here at EA Sports. Uh, You probably know me from the podcast, but here is Justin Duell, football community manager. What's up, JD? Not much. A lot of good news to break to the fans. Yes, we do. We've also got Jenica Pearson. As usual, welcome back, Jenica. It's been a while. I know. I I missed you guys. I had to come back. Well, guess what? The ratings are is not here today, but we have a very, very special guest. We'd like to formally introduce our new ratings correspondent. Uh, You probably know him. He's Hall of Fame running back, Marshall Falk. What's up, Marshall? Nothing much, man. Nothing much. Just um, once again, happy to be working with with EA on this, uh, on Madden, and Madden 13. Um, Some sick ratings, some sick ratings. I I, I believe the fans are, are really going to uh, find some of the the ratings on Madden 13 very interesting. They're gonna love what they <laughs> have. What you disagreed with anything yet? You know, I'm I, I I wasn't a guy who disagreed with my ratings. I just you know I, I it is what it is. You know, and um, I I always say uh, a lot of the guys that disagree with the ratings uh, it, it forces them to go out and prove yeah exactly. Wrong. And then you know if you if if you're a gamer and you're playing with the team and you know, the ratings aren't good and you still kicking butt. You're like, listen, I don't need 99s to beat you. So, <laughs> you know how that is when you're a gamer. <laughs> All yes. right. All right, Justin, explain to us kind of what we're doing this year with the ratings and how people can find out what the players and teams are rated. Yeah, so I'll give a brief overview and then I'll turn it over to Jenica, who's been driving a lot of this. So, we've decided to do an entire release program on our channels beginning this coming Monday. Uh, if I'm wrong on the day here, kill me, but it's July 30th. That's right. Uh, we will start, and we're breaking it down by weeks. So the first week, um, next week, it will be the week of the quarterback. Uh, so we will be recording videos here where Marshall will actually be bringing you the top 10 overall quarterbacks in Madden. And then we're going to allow you to vote on four specific categories for a quarterback. So speed, um, awareness, um, throwing power, and accuracy. And you're actually going to be able to vote in our Facebook page. And then at the end of the week on Friday, we will reveal the winners in that category who you think should be the highest rated. But we'll also on our website reveal the entire ratings for every quarterback in Madden NFL 13. And then I'll let Jenica go into the following weeks here to plan. So the following week after we release the quarterbacks, the second week will be the week of the uh, running back. Some a position that Marshall, I think I you're know pretty, a little bit about, just a little bit, just a little bit, just a tad. But uh, yeah, so like Justin said, on Mondays we're gonna unveil, or Marshall rather is gonna unveil the top ten overall running backs in Madden NFL 13, and then on Monday we'll talk about speed, elusiveness the following day, trucking, and then uh, I, I believe agility. Agility, Agility, I believe. So, uh, and the following week, we'll go into the receiving position. Same thing. Monday, Marshall will reveal the top 10. We'll talk about speed. We'll talk about spectacular catch. We'll talk about uh, a couple of. (laughs) I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind here. Um, Again, oh gosh. And all these ratings have already been decided. Yes. Marshall's yeah. record, Marshall Except recorded the videos today. We haven't released well, the them yet. Overalls the overalls have been decided. Have been decided. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So this is where the fans are actually coming in here. So sure. for say for speed for a running back, right? Now we're not going to open this up to every running back in the league. I think everybody <laughs> I think there is a debate with who out of maybe the top three guys who is the fastest guy in the league. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those three guys, post a poll question on the Madden page and say, Okay, Madden fans. Here's who we say are the top three, or who Donnie says is the top three running backs in the game. It's open to you to vote on, and whoever you vote on and put as the highest ranked guy, he will actually have the highest speed rating for a running back in Madden, and then we'll fall in line. The second guy will go number two and the three, and then the rest of the guys will still remain how Donnie has rated them. So it's not it's not opening it up so crazy Cleveland fan, you know fans like myself can't go and say, well, Brandon Whedon's the number one quarterback in the league. We're keeping it within reason, uh, but still giving you a voice in the overall process. Justin is a crazy Browns fan. Absolutely, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that. That's you, you've heard it today. I, I, I uh, believe you've been around him as today? a Browns fan and saying that that makes him crazy. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, here's the thing, right? So, I, as I was telling you, born in '83, the team hasn't won anything since '64. There, there can't be a bandwagon Browns fan right now. 
That's true. Like there isn't. But if we make the playoffs, like I have notes in my head <laughs> of who Browns fans are and are not, and but, when we win a Super Bowl. You know, Justin, I feel your pain. Um, uh, just what three years ago, uh, I'm, I'm from New Orleans, born and raised with the Saints, had never won anything. And working for NFL Network, I'm on the field watching the trophy presentation of my childhood team. You know, it was a it, it was a great feeling. I'm like, man, I, you, you never think it's going to happen, and then it happened. So, yeah. you know, keep supporting, man. Keep so, supporting. So, I mean, since you're a you know a born and raised New Orleans native, and you celebrate the Saints. Do you still have a little bit of that feeling for the Rams? Oh yeah, no, I love okay. the Rams. I, I I love the Rams uh, for for the opportunity that they gave me uh, and the Colts. But I mean, you know, it, it's a it's a dream. It's a childhood dream to play professional football. Yeah, and you get to live that dream out. And, and I mean, you get paid to do it. And and I mean, paid handsomely. Sure. And and and, and call it a job. You know, for thirteen years. So. I mean, I'm 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 in debt to the experience that I was able to have by being drafted by the Colts and the Ursay family, and 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 then the Rams trading for me and and allowing me to play there. So I'm thankful. I I, I followed him. I wished him well. Um, but you know, in my heart, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a New Orleanian. I'm a Saint fan. You know, I I bleed black and gold. It's 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 how it is. But when I had to do a job, I did my job. <laughs> exactly. All right, uh, back when you were playing, that was about when I started playing fantasy football, and you were pretty, uh, pretty high draft pick in most fantasy football. We talk a lot about fantasy football on this podcast. Do you play fantasy football yourself? I do play fantasy football. Um, it's uh, it, and and here's the thing, you know, I I'll tell you what I love about fantasy football. It's not just you know if. If you're Justin and your team sucks, you know you can still enjoy the season, right? Because you get to pick, or if, or if, and uh, and and I know I know Jenica is into football, but a lot of women that aren't into football, you get them into fantasy football. That gets them into football. It's another way to drive attention to the sport because it's it's a wonderful sport. I believe we're there's an advantage of having a shorter season because people. People get to crave it like we're craving it now. We want the season yeah. to start now, um, unlike baseball and basketball that, you know, eight, nine months of playing. It, it's a long season. Sure. But for us, it's short. Fantasy football drives people to the sport. Um, people who are not interested, who weren't interested, feel like it's barbaric. They find fantasy football fun and, and, and following other players instead of teams. So – I love it. Yeah, I find it helps me keep up with the rest of the league because I'm a big Broncos fan, but you know, I became a fan of Carolina last season because I happen to have Cam Newton on my team. It's like I watch just about every Carolina Panthers uh, football game just because of that. So I think it, it's interesting. It helps you keep up with uh, you know the rest of the league. I think what's interesting about it, too, is like games are on Thursdays, Sundays, Mondays, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday – Saturday, people are still talking about the NFL mm -hmm. every single day of the yeah. week, you know, before preseason, postseason, in the regular season. I mean, that is – without having games every day like the NBA or the MLB, I mean, the NFL is predominantly the sports news every day, all day. So, I mean, I think fantasy helps that as well. It, it's, it's amazing how popular it's gotten too because – even in the broadcasts, I've noticed like in recent years, you'll see, see more of the stats for certain players during the week because everybody wants to know while they're watching their favorite game, how's my running back doing? And then even in Madden, like we've got the Madden Ultimate Team uh, fantasy players of the week and stuff like that. So I, I think it's interesting how much. And, it's and what's big is that injury report. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. You you, you want to know? You need to know if you if you uh, if you need to sit a guy. But but I have to say this. Um, during that time. When when uh, when fantasy was was it was growing, as a player, it was it was conflicting to walk into a stadium, and have a and have a fan say, "Hey, Marshall, I hope you score three touchdowns, but I want you guys to lose." Yeah, <laughs> that happens. Like what? That is weird. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, I don't know how to take that. Like, do I ignore you all the way, <laughs> or do I say thank you? What, what, what are Just you saying? Just take it's, half of the comments. <laughs> right. It's, but but as a player, you're kind of conflicted. Right. Yeah. Sometimes because back in the day, somebody walked into your stadium, you wanted them to get creamed. 
Yeah. Right. But now in fantasy football, it's like, let him have a good game, but we need to win. Yeah. 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 It's like you play against a quarterback that you have. It's like, well, hopefully you get up really big and they're trying to pass to come back and just like keep eating 20 to the 20 for yards. It's weird. That's a, that's a weird dynamic that fantasy football brings to the, the, the quote unquote purist, the, the, the pure football fans who won't, who won't dabble in the fantasy because they only want to root for their team. Yeah, it, it makes it tough, definitely, every, especially when you're you're talking about your team's game and you're going up and your team is going up against, you know, maybe like, do, a couple do of you, your fantasy do, players. I mean, will you will you draft anybody on your fantasy team that's a Raider or a Charger? Yeah, mm-hmm. I have to. I mean, I have to try to win the league, Not so at I all. have to. Uh, See, completely Justin's, opposite. Justin's <laughs> no, too hard. I yeah. will not take a Steeler or a Raven <laughs> or a Bengal for anything. You're missing. Out at some pretty yeah. it doesn't matter, but, it does, but Ray Rice, it doesn't the man matter. has pride. Okay, like yeah, it's but, about pride. When I know Ray Rice will hang 175 yards on our run defense, <laughs> I can't root for that. Like I don't want to win that. I'd rather. I understand. Live on my, you know. I understand. Live. See, right. Donnie always says it like this. The Czar always says, you know, I'm a Bucks fan, but I'm a smart football fan. So I, I understand. You know, as much as I love my Bucks. I'm not going to pick them in every game to win. I'm not going to pick them in every game to stop a, a run or anything. So we I'm did a, a smart pick football on. fan, whereas Justin is diehard, never always talks about Ohio State, always talks about the Cleveland Browns, and then relates everything to that. So here's the thing. <laughs> in our pick em last year, I, I would not pick the Browns to lose any game, and we went 5-11. and 11, And I think I lost to pick them by 11 you games. <laughs> you know what? You know what, though? I respect you for that. There you go. And if, and if I play for the Browns, like you would be the kind of person that we'd be trying to lay it on the line for, you know, because that's that's what Matt like. It, right. it, that's what that, those are the people that through the, through the losses they sit in the stands. Yeah. You know, that's what it's all about. Is that you? I can totally see. Oh, you. that's in the him. Rain, Trust me. So thunderstorm. It upsets my wife to no end. It doesn't. The the uh, perfect example last year. I take her to a Browns backers. Uh, place here um we found like 200 fans and browns fans are all the same like everybody looks like a construction worker they're just out there <laughs> screaming Blue collar. and uh, so it's a texans White game collar. we go down 21 nothing in like the first 10 minutes and she's like well it's over ready to go and i'm like i'm not leaving like i stayed like there's no chance we were winning that game but i refuse because worst case you get to watch younger players coming in and play or at least you know what your strategy is because you can tell on a loss if the team's giving up, if the coaches still have strategy, is it not execution? As a fan, I want to see that. And so I stick around. Well, well as an analyst, I'm, I'm going to say that you guys now have playmakers. Like the direction – before this year, I was questioning Mike Holmgren's direction with the team. And he answered a lot of questions with this year's draft and how they went about what they want to do. If um, Do you like the Gordon pick? I do, I do. I, I, I like the Gordon. Um, if if Wheaton can can somehow handle what the NFL is going to throw at him, which is getting bounced around, um, failure, how, how to look for success through failure, and if Trent Richardson, um, if he can stay healthy, uh, man, it's. You guys, because when you start to look at the division, you guys are the young team right. in the division. You guys in Cincinnati, and the problem that both both teams usually have is keeping their own talent. Yeah, and that's yeah. where that's where I think it's good for us having a guy like Joe Hayden who's embraced the yes. city. I mean, that guy shows up not to, not to turn this into an all brown show, but yeah. he shows yeah. up for every Indians and Cavs home game. I know in costume. I know for people to support the team. I know, and it's it, rare to, you, to you, find you, that. You guys have a, a owner who's not bashful with the checkbook. He'll, yeah, he'll spend money. So um, let's see, man. Let's see if we can get the dog pound back. How many wins? So I, their toughest schedule, I as a fan consider 8-8 eight and eight as a success this year. When you look at the, the schedule, I think every team other than three either played in the playoffs or wore up for a playoff position in the last week of the season. Uh, so 8-8 eight and eight's a success. When's the me. last time the Browns were ever 8-8? Eight and eight? So that's why I have a little bit of hate for the Colts right now <laughs> because the Browns went 10-6 and six and had a chance to make the playoffs, but the Colts rested their players – and if you remember that big hit, the Titans or the Colts player smacks the Titans player early on. I'm like, yes, the Colts are going to win. They lose. Browns didn't make the playoffs in 07. Hey, so. man, that's just like last year with the Lions when they put Matt Flynn in over Aaron Rodgers. Brown, or 
Lions lost that game, could have played the Giants who went to go win it, but nobody thought that. So instead, the Lions had to go to New Orleans and get their butts handed to them in the first womp, round. Womp. <laughs> That's what they hate. Bringing it back to Madden, though. Uh, Marshall, do you ever have a chance to, to play Madden these days? No, I um, I uh, I have kids, and my kids oh, okay. love to play games, and I try to get them out of the house <laughs> because this is this is all this is how um, you know my two sons, my my fourteen year old, he has learned coverages and how to talk to me about. He's literate in football because of what Madden teaches them. Just, just the, the variety of things that that now the game affords you, whether it's um, you know cover three, cover one, uh, you know how to play man free, cloud, smoke. He talks to me in football terms, <laughs> like he he's played in the league. So it's funny, but they kick my butt. I don't want to play. I don't like to lose. So I try to get them out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's crazy too is this year we have uh, Connect integration. So. On the Xbox 360, using the Kinect, it's all voice control. So you can control both offense and defense, calling audibles, calling you know all types of different plays just through the voice interaction. So I think that's going to take football IQ on kids ranging from you know 12 all the way up to 35 with some of the craziest football yeah. knowledge. I always say like you know Kinect's in English. We're going to have some people who aren't you know where English isn't their primary language, and they're only going to be able to communicate to us through. Football calls. <laughs> yeah, that's serious. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> Cover three. So there's there's spy one, spy. There's one topic before Marshall goes. I want to cover it. So every year we always see a guy. Last year it was like Victor Cruz, who and even in the Madden universe, who goes from like relatively unknown to I think Victor finished in high 80s or something like yep. that in ratings. Is there a guy out there that you think of right now that's not, maybe not as well known but may burst onto the scene this year? Oh man, let's see, who could be that guy? That's a that's a that's a. Hmm. It's tough because those those Victor Cruz type guys are kind of rare, aren't they? They're just well, out they, of nowhere. They, they are, but usually, just like Victor Cruz, like we saw it in Victor Cruz. The Giants tried to hide Victor Cruz. Yeah. He had the big. It was a it was a Sunday a mon, a Sunday night on NBC yeah. when he caught five touchdowns in the preseason game. And then all of a sudden he disappeared with the Giants. It was like, right. where did Victor Cruz go? Why aren't they playing that kid wearing number one? And so, you know, they at the time they had Steve Smith and I think uh, Toomer was still there. Yeah. And then they got rid of those guys. And the next year he was like, he was like the guy. But um, who do I like? Who could be that guy? Hmm. I mean, if he Man, stays out of a... trouble, you think Des Bryant has it? No, nah, Des. I, I just. I. I don't. I don't. Um. I, I don't subscribe to people getting altercations with their mother. That's just not. I, 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 I don't. I'm not trying to be too much of Broncos Homer here, but what about Eric Decker? I was about to say Eric Decker's not that bad. Yeah, but with that's a, a quarterback. That's, that's, I mean, it. It's it, like when when it's you expected put, almost. Peyton Manning in his career. Right. Every year he's had a receiver in the Pro Bowl. And the one year it wasn't a receiver, it was his running back that went to the Pro Bowl because he caught 90 balls. Yeah. Okay? Well, who was that? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> so uh, every year, every year that he's played, he's had a receiver. In the, so one of those two guys are going. I, You know, I, I and I felt like Decker had a breakout year last year. He kind of did. That was – that was – that was, Demarius had the big play there uh, yeah, against the Steelers, but – Throughout Decker the year, was, Decker, Decker yeah. was yeah. Decker was like the, the go-to. Yeah, you think he a was, guy like Macklin is is at some point needs to. They don't have enough footballs to spread around. Yeah. You know, they they just they don't they don't have enough enough footballs to to spread around. But um, it's 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 it. That's, There's a that's lot a, of guys out there. That's a it <laughs> it is. But but um. And it's funny that you say that because I, I actually I, I picked Demarius Thomas to have a huge year this year mm -hmm. as a guy that was that would kind of jump to that next level and, uh, and and really stand out. I hope um, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting on him. It's and I'm I'm pretty. Listen, he he will. You either get it or you won't play with with Peyton. That's just how it right. is. Like it's it's like that. But man, there's there's so many guys. So many guys that could that could have it, and the bad part is, like for 
I, I, I think in the running back world, but someone has to get hurt for that guy to, like, have a big year. Um, you know, I, I, I really I, – I, I, I fall in love with running backs, guys that can, that can do it all, that can catch the football, run, block. Um, you know, uh, a guy like Doug Martin. I, I, I believe Doug Martin, he's gonna, he's, he is going to be he, – he'll be starting – yeah, you know he 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 will be starting before you know it because he fits exactly what Shiano had in yes. kind of like a rice mold yes. at Rutgers. Yes, and and because Legarrett Le Blunt is just not a dependable guy, I feel like Doug Martin will start and and uh, and really take off and and have a huge year. Yeah, um, for and them. They, and they got who was it? Was it Carl Nix? You know what? I, I have a, I, I've been trying to think of this guy's name and nobody knows. Like people forget. The third receiver for the Atlanta Falcons will have a huge year this year because people are going to focus on Roddy White and Julio Jones. Is Harry it, Douglas. Harry Douglas, yeah. He's a little slot receiver. Guys, you know, fast, quick. Harry Douglas, <laughs> uh, just just a name out of the blue. He'll have he'll have an awesome year this year. There you go. There's your right. there's your somebody uh, that's I mean just Victor off Cruz. the beaten path. All right, we'll, we'll check out Harry Douglas. Then. Very cool. But this is not the last time we'll hear from Marshall. No, no, no. Marshall's going to come back throughout the year, and you guys can also check out all of the ratings starting on the, the 24th of August. We'll have the Madden NFL Ratings Hub available when you go visit easports.com backslash Madden NFL. And you guys can check out all the ratings for all the players throughout the year. And we'll update those per our roster weekly roster updates. And Marshall will come back on the show and talk to us about those movers and shakers throughout the year with our rating czar, Donnie Moore. So, Very good. You know, Marshall, thank you. Huge thank oh, you I'm, to I'm, you. This I'm happy awesome. to bring it to the fans. I'm happy to be the correspondent to bring it to the fans. We appreciate just just it, remember, I didn't. I, this, these are not my ratings. <laughs> Y'all don't be blowing me up don't, on Twitter yeah. like I made the ratings to your favorite players. You should just then at Donnie, our ratings are, and then you we'll can debate just Donnie on the air. I'll, I'll occasionally look at your Twitter handle, see who guys are blowing you up for, and we'll call Donnie out in the show and get a good debate going. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun. Usually like happens. It. Once again, uh, do we have any demo details? When can people expect to hear those? Demo. We don't have a date to share yet or exactly when we will launch the details, but, but it's coming soon. there will be a soon. demo. Yes, yes there, there will be a demo. <laughs> um, we will get the details out to you uh, soon. All right, once again, game is in stores August 28th in North America, and the Europe date is when, Jenica? Same day. Same day. August 28th. Go pre-order now. Until next week, I'm AJ. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes. Later.